Good morning and welcome to the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy Hall of Honor induction ceremony. Your host for today's ceremony is the Commandant of the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy, Command Sergeant Major Dennis DeFries. We'd like to take a moment to start by recognizing some of the special people who have joined us here today, starting with the wife of our Commandant, Ms. Jane DeFries. Our distinguished guests include Sergeant Major of the Army and Mrs. Ray Chandler. The West Texas civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army, Mr. Tom Thomas. The Acting Command Sergeant Major of the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command, Command Sergeant Major Joe Parson. And the Command Sergeant Major of the 1st Armored Division in Fort Bliss, Command Sergeant Major Lance Lear. We are also pleased to be joined by four members of the USASMA Hall of Honor. Sergeant Major of the Army Kenneth Preston, United States Army Retired. Command Sergeant Major Dan Elder, United States Army Retired. Command Sergeant Major Jimmy Spencer, United States Army Retired, and Sergeant Major Al Hobbs, United States Army Retired. We are also very much honored to be joined by a former senior leader of the, the Academy, our 12th Commandant, Colonel Russell DeWitt. Uh, also joining us today is Mr. Kerry Weston, the El Paso Director of Economic and International Development, Mr. John Bailey and Ms. Letty West of the Greater El Paso Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Gus Rodriguez, the West Texas President of the Association of the United States Army. Command Sergeant Major Lee Handy, United States Army Retired from the United Services Automobile Association. Ms. Sophia Gonzalez and Ms. Melissa, Melissa Reyes from Security Service Federal Credit Union. And Ms. Pam Swan of the Veteran United Home Loans. We also welcome the very special guests and families of family members of our inductee, Colonel Ostrowitzki, his wife, Ms. Jane Ost Ostrowitzki. Their children, Ms. Christina Wiegel, I'm going to mess this up, Wegleitner, <laughs> Mr. Joseph Osterwitzki, Lieutenant Colonel Jacqueline Chenoweth, United States Army Retired, and Mr. Eric Osterwitzki, and also their grandchildren, Sergeant Jos Jacob Osterwitzki, Ms. Laura Wegleitner, and Ms. Sarah Osterwitzki. Finally, we welcome a very special guest of Command Sergeant Major Thomas, Ms. Donna Laverty. Ladies and gentlemen, Class 65, please join us in a grand welcoming of the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy Hall of Honor inductees. Hailing from Lodz, Poland, Colonel, United States Army Retired, Joseph Ostrowitzki. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, creator, sustainer of the universe, we've assembled first to say thank you for allowing us to behold the year 2015. Secondly, we have come from various geographical locations to recognize two inductees into the U.S. Army Sergeant's Major Academy Hall of Honor, Colonel Joseph Oscar Whiskey and Command Sergeant Major Don E. Thomas. We thank you for their significant contributions in support of the Sergeant's Major Academy and the non-commissioned officer education system. In addition, we bless your name for their vast multi-skill leadership in enhancing this institution as the premier non-commissioned officer education in the world. It was their vast leadership attributes in producing the right soldier with the right skills at the right time in support of our great army and a nation at war. Help us as we celebrate this day that all things come of you. We ask that you continue to stretch out your hands over our men and women who are in harm's way worldwide, defending and protecting our freedom as U.S. citizens. 
continue to provide our leadership with wisdom, knowledge, direction, and understanding in their decision-making process. I ask all these things in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. the Continental Army. Its foundation began a rich heritage of service and successful defense of this great country and her citizens. Today we celebrate the honor, loyalty, and bravery demonstrated in this noble calling as we present America's Army, the strength of a nation. contributed to the lineage of the non-commissioned officer corps and NCO education system. However, there are only a very few whose actions or inspiration impacted Army-wide advancements in NCO education, training, and development. These remarkable individuals proved invaluable in developing and maintaining our reputation as the premier corps of non-commissioned officers in the world. From the numerous individuals whose excellence alone 
is deserving of recognition. The United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy selects only those rare individuals whose unique and extraordinary accomplishments separate them from all others as they embody the Academy's motto, Ultima. Today we recognize two of those rare individuals who, over the course of their careers, have left significant and lasting positive impacts on the training, education, and development of NCOs and the continued professional prowess and might of the United States Army. Please welcome to the stage the Commandant of the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy, Command Sergeant Major Dennis DeFries. Good morning, Happy New Year. Oh. See, they're still not looking. So. <laughs> All right, as you just heard, those selected for induction in the Hall of Honor are rare individuals who, over the course of their career, have left a significant and lasting and positive impact on the training, education, and development of NCOs. The two individuals we induct today are perfect examples of that. Now, one of them's a, a redo because he inexplicably no showed his last. No, I'm just <laughs> but, but the students will remember in August, we did uh, do his initial induction then with General Sullivan, but he was detained. Sergeant Majors are never late, they're never absent, they're just detained. <laughs> so, but first we're going we're gonna to talk about Colonel Joseph Ostrowski. He was born in Lotz, is that how you pronounce it? Lotz, Poland, and survived a Russian concentration camp as a young boy before immigrating to New York after World War II. He would eventually serve, or excuse me, he would eventually enter Siena College in Loudonville, New York, and later graduated with a master's degree in personnel management from Central Michigan University. He was commissioned as a second lieutenant and entered the U.S. Army in June of 1958. His early assignments include missile battalions in Korea, Ohio, and Germany, followed, you know, I can't get away from 88 people. <laughs> <laughs> Must be this poor list thing. <laughs> anyway, followed by liaison officer, 6th artillery group at Fort Bliss. He served in Vietnam as a district senior advisor before assignment to the staff communications division as the assistant secretary of the general staff, officer of the chief of staff of the army. He then served as commander of 1st Battalion, 62nd Air Defense Artillery, and executive officer in the 25th Infantry Division Artillery before serving in the Majors Division, U.S. Army Military Personnel Center. Colonel Oskowitzki then served as commander of 5th Training Brigade, where he was picked to be the 5th USASMA Commandant. He subsequently served as the Chief of Staff of the Army Criminal Investigation Division before culminating his career as the 1st Garrison Commander at Fort Bliss. Colonel Oskowitzki made a major impact on the development of Sergeant's Major and the evolution of the non-commissioned officer education system while at USASMA. Upon his selection to head up the academy, Colonel Oskowitzki was charged by the Commanding General of TRADOC to take a look at USASMA and recommend mission changes. What resulted was an extensive mission expansion for the organization. Not only would USASMA be responsible for developing and conducting the Sergeant's Major course, but Colonel Oskowitzki added that the Academy would be responsible for all courses within NCOES as well as other functional courses. Under Colonel Oskowitzki's command, USASMA first standardized NCO training for the Army by combining the primary leader leadership and primary NCO core courses into the primary leadership development course to better serve combat, combat support, and combat service support personnel at the junior level for 17 proponent NCO academies. <clears throat> then common core curricula were developed, approved and implemented army-wide for the first time for each level of NCO education. The first sergeant's course, the advanced NCO course and the basic NCO course, the academy became the center for NCO development and approval authority for any changes to these common core curricula. These courses remain the NCO educational ladder for over 20 years and were adjusted in line with new technologies and other revisions. His other accomplishments include the establishment of the Museum of the Non-Commissioned Officer 
and its supporting association in the oral history program in 1981. It was also instrumental, extremely instrumental, in the initial design, approval, and construction of this campus, which opened its doors four years after this term as commandant was complete. So I would ask Colonel Retired Joseph Oskowski to please join me on stage as we induct you into the Sassman Hall of Honor. Our inductee's contributions to the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy mark him with distinction and honor as we proudly name Colonel Joseph Ostrowitzki, a member of the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy Hall of Honor. Fortunately, again, I've done something different. I did prepare a couple of remarks just to ensure that I do cover some of the things. Again, bear with me. Needless to say, it is quite an honor to be standing here today as a recipient of this prestigious award. It is also needless to say that it is a very humbling experience for someone who as a small boy spent two years in Russian war camp two years as a refugee in Iran, four in Tanzania, Africa, and three in England, before emigrating into the United States. Five years to date, to the date of my arrival in the United States, I became an American citizen, and four years later, I became an American soldier. In subsequent years, I was given the privilege and the highest honor of commanding soldiers, in peacetime as well as in combat. After commanding brigade, I was given an yet another opportunity to command the best our enlisted force had to offer. Many years spent at the academy, and my years at the spent at the academy, contributing to the future I consider to be the most productive years of my military career. Having said that, I emphasize and want to underscore that the credit for why I stand here today goes to my staff and faculty who challenge me every day and officer called leadership from the chief of staff of the army to the trader commander. They not only provided me with personal guidance, but the resources to help me to execute that guidance. They recognized that the enlisted education system needed a place to speak with one voice and permanent place to call its own. I humble by this honor and God bless you, that's not. not just uh, contributions to the NCO Corps and NCO education, but also that your name had to be really hard to pronounce. <laughs> That's a new, new criteria now. <laughs> All right, so our second inductee. Like I said, we, had, we did this back in August, and he ditched us. So we we'll redo it, and showed up this time. So Don Thomas has been a champion you guys have heard this already once. You may hear it again. Don Thomas has been a champion for soldiers training in NCOES development for more than 40 years. Serving in the Army for 29 years, Don devoted himself to the training, leading, and development and education of soldiers and non-commissioned officers. <clears throat> His experiences while serving during Vietnam made him a uniquely qualified expert in law enforcement and physical security. His assignments at the installation and on senior army staffs served as a catalyst for him to instill in others a desire to train and care for soldiers 
by emphasizing self and professional development, leader confidence, and encouraging lifelong learning. He culminated his Army career as the Command Sergeant Major of U.S. Forces Korea and 8th United States Army. There he made assignments of instructors to both the 8th Army and SEAL Academy and the Sergeant Major Academy his number one priority, insisting on selecting only the best qualified leaders to teach the future junior and senior NCOs of the Army and sister services. A strong supporter of the advancement and education of our international partner nations NCO Corps, Don played a pivotal role in the selection of Korean Army senior non-commissioned officers for attendance to the Sergeant's Major Academy. He also he has also made a direct contribution to the growth and development of our most senior NCOs by serving as a senior member, senior mentor for the United States Army Command Sergeant Major course in the United States Army Pre-Command course at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, providing keen insight and leadership philosophy as a senior Army member of the Flag Officer Command Team. Like his fellow inductee, Don Thomas hasn't stopped serving soldiers and NCOs and continues to make great contributions in the education, training, and development of soldiers and NCOs alike as the Assistant Director, Non-Commissioned Officer, and Soldier Programs Association of the United States Army. It is, here he can, it is here he continues to serve as a mentor to the current and future generations of NCOs by traveling around the Army, conducting professional development sessions. He has served on the Board of Directors for the Army Heritage Foundation that promotes and preserves Army history and the continuing education of non-commissioned officers. He was instrumental in the establishment of the Sergeant Major Larry L. Strickland Educational Leadership Scholarship and presents awards at every U.S. Army Sergeant's Major Academy course graduation in recognition of academic excellence. So I would ask Command Sergeant Major Retired Don Thomas to please join me on the stage as we induct you into the USAS Mahal Hall. contributions to the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy mark him with distinction and honor as we proudly name Command Sergeant Major Don Thomas, a member of the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy Hall of Honor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Command Sergeant Major Thomas. to share the stage with you today. I really appreciate it. So, Major Dr. Chapman, I know you're on the downhill side of your many years of service to this great nation, Congress, and I really appreciate you and Gene for being here today. I know this is the second time, this is the second time they've invited me now to do this. The first time the Commandant Chief told me I was uh, negligent in my responsibility to be here. But I had a medical emergency, and I just couldn't get off off that gurney to get here. <laughs> but uh, I, I had I had a I had a number of people surrounding me last night to make sure that I did nothing stupid, <laughs> so I wouldn't be here today. But uh, I am here. But uh, so Major, I really appreciate everything you have done for our honor since serving as a 14th Sergeant Major. Really appreciate it. Tim Preston, you're my battle buddy now. I had to get rid of that other jack leg guy called Jimmy Spencer. But uh, <laughs> thank you. And my good friend, Tom Thomas, a castle for Texas. I know you were here last time too, but I really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to be here uh, uh, today. Uh, Joe, thank you. Appreciate it and my, my good friend, Jimmy Spencer. I can't say enough about what you've done to enhance my career and enhance what I do for the Army, what we do for the Army. Thank you so very much. Uh, 
calling them from all the way up from San Antonio, I call them. Came out, him and his wife came all the way up from San Antonio, Texas to be here today. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, Dan, I didn't know you were coming, buddy, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Uh, you, you, you have always been, been there when I needed you. Charlie Gallet. Charlie Gallet is an MP. My background is MP. Where you at, Charlie? Where that is over there. I would go into a unit and get it straight, and Charlie Gallet would come behind me and screw it up. <laughs> I don't know how to manage to do that. I don't, twice, yes. I don't know how he managed to do that, but I finally said, I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> Al Hobbs, where you at, Al? Thank you. Thank you for what you do for our Army every single day. And you have been doing it as long as I can remember. I think I was a student here in class. Class 31, guys. <laughs> I was in class 31, and Al Hobbs was a, he was a battalion commander. Yeah, continue to serve. Uh, Ron Frazier. Ron Frazier has been an institution here at this academy as long as anybody can remember. Ron, where you at, Ron? Is he in here? If he's not, I want to thank him. Uh, Pam Swan. Thanks, Pam. Thanks for all you do. When we, when we need something, especially money, <laughs> you're there. You're there. Yeah. And last but not least, the one person that's probably, not probably, is responsible for me being behind this podium today is Miss Donna Lavery. She, um, you know how stubborn non-commissioned officers can be. You know, I had this, I had this weird feeling in my, in my chest. And I said, I'll be okay. She says, no, you're not going to be okay. We need to take you to the hospital. And I tried to talk her out of it, but she wouldn't have none of it. And had she not insisted that I go to the hospital, like I said, I would not, I would not be here today. And I want to publicly thank her today for saving my life and being here today. And she, and she brought her bodyguard with her, Dale Lively, her brother. Dale, you're a great American, buddy. Let me tell you that right now, you're a great American. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time, but I, 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 am, I am so honored, so honored to be in this elite club called the Hall of Honor. I got a phone call from the Commandant back in July of 14. I missed the first call, and I apologize for missing the first call. Um, but he called me and said, you're going to be inducted into the Hall of Honor at the Sergeant Major Academy. As with all phone calls like that, you think it's a prank. Um, but he, he convinced me that it was not. And um, I was on it. I was on it. So I, I, I did a little research. But I, I, I've been, I, I come here every year. And I look at these, these pictures of very distinguished uh, men and women that's been inducted in the Hall of Honor. And I said, let me just, let me just look at it. Since 2006, there's been 28, I think, inducted in the Hall of Honor, the likes of which are General Gordon R. Sullivan, the 32nd Chief of Staff of the Army. He's an author, he's a historian, and he's currently the President and CEO of AUSA. Great American. Okay. Nowhere in the world am I Gordon R. Sullivan. Then I look at guys like Ken Preston. Ken Preston, the longest serving SMA that we've ever had in the Army. Seven consecutive years. And I'm telling you, I work with that guy right now, and he's still got more energy than an 18 year old. I tell him, I say, slow down, Ken, slow down. He says, I'll slow down when I die. I said, okay. And you got, and you got guys like Dan Elder. Dan Elder, 
a writer, historian, I mean, there's uh, the AMC, short major, I mean, great American. Jimmy Spencer, 32 years in the Army, spent over 20 years as a director of the NCO and soldier programs at AUSA, and he told me he was going to retire, but that wasn't true. He is now on the Vietnam, what is it, Jimmy? Commemorative Commission. So he's still working. And Al Hobbs. I mean, all of these guys, and someone saw fit to include me into that, into that group of very, very, very important individuals. And I don't know who it was, Commandant, but I sincerely appreciate it. I mean, that's a, that's a high price company there. And I thank you. <laughs> Class 65. Man, I like the way you talk. I like the way you talk. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you continue to do. But I guess, because the Army is going to, and the Sergeant Major Army knows it, the Army is going to go through some trying times over the next couple of years with sequestration and everything. When you go out to your next units, they're going to be looking for you for guidance and direction. And you have got it by attending the Sergeant Major Academy. There's no other institution in the world that trains men and women to do the bidding for the nation like the Soldiers Major Cap. So do us proud, 65. Oh. And thank you so very much. Thank all of you for attending. Come along again. Thank you so very much for allowing me to share the stage with you today. God bless the Academy. God bless our great Army. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. The Academy is always honored with the associations that we have with uh, our graduates as well as our, all of our members. Bill Oshkowitzki, Sergeant Major Thomas, thank you for accepting this honor. We again like to thank all of our special guests, family members, and members of the USASM Hall of Honor who have joined us here this morning. With that said, please rise for the singing of the Army song and remain standing for the departure of our Hall of Honor members and distinguished visitors. <laughs>